here on the Turning Post on this Wednesday. Time now for the Community Foundation program and Brian Johnson and he brought some guests with brought us. Brought some guests. You did. You you even warned us last month you were going to bring them with Yeah, them. yeah. They've been thinking about the questions that we're going to ask them yeah. all summer. Oh, they've been working so, hard studying we've, up. We've been fortunate to have a couple of interns with us this summer um, that will welcome and talk with later in the program mm -hmm. but we've got Delaney Strasser and Madeline Calloway who have been interning with us so they're going to share some of the fun things that they've been doing. Cool, can't wait to hear. So a few things we've got going on at the foundation right now. Um, we've been talking about Lily Endowment Gift mm -hmm. 7 matching. We still have those matching funds available. I know I've got quite a few questions over the last couple of weeks about what's still available on that. It's the time of year that people start thinking about their end of year giving. So mm -hmm. if you're curious about that, that is a two for one match. Um, we've raised over $213,000 of our $375,000 goal. Cool. So I'm getting, not getting there. I'm not great at math, but Madeline is an accounting major <laughs> or involved in accounting or, or something related to, she knows stuff about accounting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if my math is correct, 213,000 is over half of 375,000. We'll let her confirm that later in the program. But, um, so that's something that's really exciting. Thank you to everybody who has participated in that. And um, we talk about the grants that we give and these funds really let us uh, make some of those grants throughout the community that make a big impact in the community. So thank you to everybody who participated in that. If you're starting to think about end of year giving, think about this. Where can you get two dollars for every dollar that you give? So, those community funds are a huge impact. So, um, talking about community funds, I'm going to mention a recent grant that we made and also a matching opportunity for a local organization. Um, we have an opportunity for some grant dollars for the Brett Bra Blackett or Memorial Sports Complex. The um, sports complex consists of the um, girls softball league and also the Fulton County Soccer Association um, two really amazing organizations if you've not been out there on a soccer evening or a softball evening or a, a weekend um, it's really encouraging to see how many cars are out there and um, things like state tournaments that they recently hosted pretty cool to have that facility in our community um, and it's really great to see that we have a matching opportunity they've got some projects out there that they're going to work on on both the soccer and softball side so um, we have some grant dollars going that direction but we've also offered a dollar for dollar match up to fifteen thousand dollars for um, their projects going on out there so if you have a chance to look either of those organizations up on facebook there's information about how to donate um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us or the soccer folks or the softball folks or the Black and Earth Sports Complex folks as a whole. Um, we're really excited to see some of the improvements that they're going to make out there. So a wonderful complex. So here in a couple weeks, I'll be spending some time out on the soccer side of things. So <laughs> Keeping you busy. I appreciate both of those organizations so much and all they do for youth athletics in our community and really great facilities to have here. So. It's almost the start of the school year. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm sure you probably hear about uh, that at home. I do. Plan. I do. The so, grumblings have started. <laughs> one, of the, one of the first things that we talk about with scholarships is the Lilly Endowment Community Scholarship. We actually have a Lilly Endowment Community Scholar from Fulton County with us today mm. that we'll be talking to. So Delaney was, was a recipient of that scholarship. and continues to be successful in college. At least she hasn't told us any different yet. Well, yeah, so she's we keeping a good secret either. <laughs> but it's that time of year where you start thinking about applying for scholarships as you're a senior. Um, the Lilly Scholarship is, is one of the first ones that we have the opportunity to offer. So that application will be available starting August 8th. It'll be so here before you know it. It'll be here before you know it. A couple weeks till school starts and then after that, um, please keep an eye on our website, nicf.org. August 8th is when it opens. There's some information that you'll need to collect for that. So if there are students that are, are listening or parents or grandparents that know a student that should apply for this, I encourage them to be keeping an eye on that. 
Um, there are a bunch of different things that's obviously academics are important, but a lot of other things like community involvement or work and volunteer experience, things like that go into that selection process. So um, we really look for well-rounded students and that's an opportunity. We're so appreciative to the Lilly Endowment for the opportunity to offer the scholarship pays for full tuition and a book stipend each year. Awesome. So, a really great opportunity. August 8th, deadline is September 9th. So we'll remind folks about that next month that by September 9th, please get those yes. applications in. But, um, but don't wait until that last month. Don't though. wait until September no. 8th to start your application, please. Yes. <laughs> Probably you will struggle with that. Yes, that's, there's, there's a little bit of information in that, but a great opportunity. So um, if you have any questions about that, reach out to Shannon Berger, our scholarship coordinator at the Community Foundation. Something else that's coming up, Women's Giving Circle. We mm -hmm. mention this occasionally. Um, their granting event will happen on October 1st, but in order to have grantees, we need applicants. Yes. So we just opened the grant application process for the Women's Giving Circle. Um, what we ask for is a short video, three to five minutes, explaining projects, showing projects, um, looking at what's available, tell us how your organization impacts the community, and then a budget page. Um, for some folks, the video is kind of a scary thing to put together. If you, if you have any concerns about that, don't hesitate to reach out to us and we can help with that. I have a couple organizations that serve youth in the community have said, we want to do this, but we don't know how to make a video. <laughs> My encouragement is find a kid. Yeah, get a youth. They'll be able to put a video together and there have been a few that have done that and the kids have had a great experience with that, um, learned through the process and the organization has received grants because of that. So these grants, like I said, three to five minute video, there is a budget page that we do ask for as well, just giving us a simple outline of the budget for the project. Those deadlines, that date is also September 9th. Okay. Um, you can check out nicf.org, click on the Fulton County page, um, either links from the grant page or from the Women's Giving Circle page. To, be a, um, to start the process, you'll see some links on there and some information about how to apply. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, I'll put in that reminder also, these grants are made possible by members dues, yes. $120 a year. Um, those grants get, com those dues all get combined and make these a bigger impact as a whole. So, um, three to five minute video, budget page, Start at NICF.org, drop a video in there, give us the budget page. Hopefully we'll see you on October 1st for the grant be awesome. event and um, we'll be at the Times Theater again. What better place to watch video grants right. than on a big screen? Get it up on the big screen. Yeah, so looking forward to that. So thanks to all the members who have made these grants possible. Um, if you are a member and haven't paid your 2024 dues yet, get those in so that you can be eligible to vote. If you're not a member and you're curious about that organization, check us out online or stop by our office and we'll give you information about how that organization works to make some really cool things possible in our community. Awesome. So, with that, we've got all the housekeeping taken <laughs> care of. Now, the now we stuff. have our guests. So and mics are on, so mics we're are good. on. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so anything you say will be heard on the radio. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Both of these ladies are experienced; they've been here before. They so have been, yes. Kind of a fun thing, but we have with us Delaney Strasser and Madeline Calloway. Um, we've had the opportunity from Lilly Endowment for the last few years to have interns throughout the year. We need to be col current college students, um, and they've been able to do some really cool things, hopefully some fun things, probably some fairly boring things as well, but um, we try to limit that too much. But um, I'll start off by asking you ladies to introduce yourself. So Delaney, tell us a little bit about yourself, things like the high school you graduated from, where you go to college, what you're studying. I can do that. I am Delaney Strasser. This is actually my second summer at the foundation. I'm very excited to be back. It's such a great opportunity. 
I was a 2022 Caston High School graduate, and as Brian mentioned, the 2022 Fulton County Lily Endowment Scholar. Um, I couldn't be more grateful for that as well. I'm currently going into my junior year at Butler University, where I study English professional writing and political science on a pre-law track, and it's been really great. Yeah, and we, we appreciate that Delaney came back for yeah. a second, so we're kind of hoping she comes back for a third time, yeah. so trying to be nice. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to guess at some point she's probably going to have to do some other uh, interning for uh, her degree. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. coming. Yes. yes. Faster than I anticipated. Yes. Yeah. That's so. something you'll learn as you uh, go yeah. through this process. Yeah. Things go fast. Yes. All right. Madeline, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Madeline Calloway. I graduated from Rochester in 2022. Um, I currently attend Lewis University over in Illinois where I'm studying accounting. And I also run cross country and track and field there. So when I'm not interning and working with the foundation, I'm often yeah. running. <laughs> we, we see her running around town. Yes. I don't think she's yes. running from anything in particular. <laughs> no. I hope not, yeah. because it'll catch me if it does, because I, I yeah. can't go near as fast as she does. Yeah. When she comes in and says, yeah, I only have to run 50 miles this week, I think <laughs> that's a lot. Only. Only. Yeah. Yeah. only. Yeah. That's nice. That's so. it. Yes, Our, this is on. my first year um, working at the foundation, and I'm loving it so far, and I'm really yeah. grateful for yeah. all the opportunities that yeah. are presented. We're excited to have both of you with us this summer. So give us an idea of some of the types of projects that you ladies have worked on so far this year. Okay. Well, something that we do, we actually do a lot of social media work, which has been really fun, kind of as Brian mentioned earlier, get the youth on that. Um, that's kind of been what we've been assigned to. Something in particular that's been really fun is we do a social media scavenger hunt around all three counties. We're actually currently in Stark County. We did Fulton County last month and it was pretty successful and it's really enjoyable to go around and um, just visit all of the locations that we've granted to and see our grant dollars and actions that as interns, I feel like that's not something that we get to experience a lot. So the disclaimer I have to put in here: <laughs> some of the pictures on the scavenger hunt in Fulton County may or may not have been skewed False. to, to <laughs> provide a different uh -huh. point what, of view from winning. Like what Brian ball. is trying to um, not let you guys know is that Madeline and I played Brian for the first time in pickleball, and he lost at <laughs> least in one yeah. singular picture that we used. That way, you don't get a pickleball. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't. I'm going to guess I probably wouldn't be yeah, either, so yeah. thanks for taking one for yeah. everybody. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, and another thing that um, I'm really grateful for is we do get the opportunity to actually sit in on a lot of meetings, yeah. and I think that's been very eye-opening to see kind of the behind-the-scenes things that go on to be able to let people have the grant money that is available, so I think that's really cool. Yeah. And I think it's interesting you, you mentioned the meetings. Um, part of the reason why we have a community foundation here locally is so that we can have local people involved in these decisions so there have been a couple of times where I've walked into you ladies offices and said what do you think about this or I want your perspective on yeah. this and I always appreciate um, we really try and be a diverse group of people yeah. backgrounds and um, youth are somebody that we want to say hey if, <laughs> if you want to make Rochester your home or Fulton County or Akron or the town of Fulton, as one of us lives in Fulton. <laughs> Delaney lives there. Um, or Kiwana. What what kind of things do we want in our community? So hopefully that challenge of pickleball will bring them both back, right? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. So another question that I have for you is what have you learned about the community foundation this summer? I'm sure you probably both knew about scholarships. That's something that people walk in the door and say, Well, we know you do scholarships, but we don't know anything else you do. So hopefully you've had a little bit of fun. I guess that question could be open-ended. What have you learned or what have you enjoyed this summer? Um, as Madeline mentioned, we've got the opportunity this summer to sit in on a lot of meetings. This summer was actually my first time as well getting to sit in on our grant meetings. And that was something that I really enjoyed because as a professional writing major, I actually got to take a grant writing class at Butler and I really, really enjoyed it, and I got to write a few grants, um, and so it's been really interesting. I'd kind of been on the side of seeing, okay, this is what our grant dollars have done. I can see the final product, but I've never seen kind of how we got there and how that process works, so it's been really cool to kind of see how those decisions are made and kind of see the fine print um, of just all that goes on to go into a singular grant. It's been really interesting. And Brian, oh yeah, Brian asked me this question last week, 
and I told him it was really hard for me to think of just one or a few things that I've learned. Um, of course, I did know about scholarships with yeah. the Community Foundation going into it, but I really was unaware of kind of all the different funds, grants, scholarships, kind of everything that they do. Um, and like I said, I go to school in, at Lewis University, which is in Illinois. It's in a suburb of Chicago, so it's been really, really cool to come back to Rochester and see how pretty much how the community functions. So yeah. I think that's my yeah. favorite thing, all yeah. of the things within that. And what I've it's neat and encouraging yes. things. So. And we're talking with Delaney Strasser and Madeline Callaway, our interns this summer. How about your favorite thing? We have, we have. I don't know if we want to say a mascot for those on the radio. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, the, maybe Randy call yeah. a play-by-play -play and describe I, this. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of scary looking when it comes in and you see from the behind. You know, the, you got to get the front view, but the, the, the chicken has arrived the chicken. in the in the studio. <laughs> As Madeline tries to <laughs> knock it over. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the chicken, Delaney. So this is actually by far one of my favorite things that has happened this summer and the entire time that I've been at the foundation. Um, we, we've granted a lot of money, um, especially in the past few years, to like nature, nature preserves, and parks, and stuff like that within the communities. So this year, we did two different events um, in Stark County and in Fulton County at different parks where we went and we did guided tours and we did scavenger hunts and just try to get people to the parks and see like look what's here this is really cool you guys should be taking advantage of this in the community and according to Brian I've never seen it myself I there is a loose chicken <laughs> at Richland Restoration Park or was we're yeah. not entirely sure um, we have this on word from we Bill. do <laughs> well I'm sure Bill has Bill, said it listening and, yes we want an update on the chicken yeah. yes we do <laughs> So Madeline and I actually, we got sent to the store to get some stuff and we found a wooden chicken and we decided <laughs> that we were going to paint it and it was going to be our grand prize chicken for the scavenger hunt. So I don't know if you want to explain how that Yeah, that so worked. now we have a painted chicken and it's kind yeah. of just remained in our office. It's not too big, but we hid it in the woods at the Richland Restoration Park. So at the event, we had a sticky note on it that said, if you find this, we didn't tell anyone about it, but we said, if you find this, then, well, it was a special prize. <laughs> Shout out to Amelia Baby for finding yes. that <laughs> We try and have a little bit of fun. Hey, you got to have fun, especially, yeah. uh, you know, with, yeah. as, as uh, you're doing crazy things sometimes. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So now you have your own mascot. We yes, do. We do. Yes. we do. I don't know. If, we haven't talked about if the chicken has a name. Hmm. We'll have to, maybe cool. we'll have, maybe we'll have to have One a last chore before they uh, leave. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. Madeline, anything that, that you found that you especially enjoyed doing this summer? Um, I would say, I know this is kind of funny because um, we often get the opportunity to look at the, we get to, something that I've really been liking is making cash receipt summaries, which is basically, That's the accountant coming yeah, it's basically, the basically account. an Excel spreadsheet and you go through and put amounts in and I love it. And so <laughs> I don't know if the lady does as much, but I'm so grateful that Madeline's here. So that I have to do that. <laughs> and I feel like where some people might find that a little bit boring. I find that very interesting and I lo love to look at that and see yeah. all of that information. Yeah. So I'm also very thankful for that. I love that stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's, we're fortunate that we're able to find interns that have a diverse background because right. you think about the world of philanthropy, well, what is that? That's people giving of time or talent or treasure, but um, there are a lot of things that we work with. We work with IRS rules and donations and um, there are a lot of those things that people don't often see. They see the grants like the pickleball courts or like the trails or like the parks yeah. that, that we help support, but I mean, you don't often see the logistics that happen behind that. So um, part of Lily Endowment School with the internship program is to be able to offer that opportunity to learn about that. And sometimes interns will say, that was a great experience, thanks for having me, and now I'm off to my next career. And yeah. we've actually had the opportunity to have um, more than one intern come back to the Community Foundation and work with us. So um, we're very grateful to Lily Endowment yeah. for providing that opportunity and we're grateful that we can find some really amazing students in our community that decide that they're okay with hanging out with us for the summer. <laughs> so. Well, I got, that's, my, well, that's one question I've got for both of you. Why did you decide to do the internship? What, what, you know, if there's kids out there that are thinking about this and doing what drew you in to do the internship with the Community Foundation? Yeah. 
So as I mentioned before, I'm a Lilly Endowment Scholar, so the Community Foundation and Lilly Endowment quite literally changed my entire life. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today without either of them. I especially wouldn't be at Butler University without either of them. So um, when I got the offer, I just thought, wow, how great that would be to learn more about the place and the community that has given me so much, and I want to give back to them the same amount that they've given to me. So that was kind of my driving force, and I love it. And, and we talked about the things that happen behind the scenes. Legal work is one of those things that happens behind yeah. the scenes. So. Now, what drew you into it? So this is actually a funny story um, originally, but um, Jay, our executive director, lives down the road for me. And so one day last summer, I was on a run, and he stopped me. And long story short, he pretty much asked me if I'd be interested in applying um, and if this would be anything I'd be interested in for this summer. Yeah. Um, and so at first, I, didn't, I wasn't really sure, and I looked into it, and I thought, like, wow, this is a really great opportunity. Um, I will be home in the summer the next couple of years and it's something right in Rochester that's been, it's showing to be very rewarding, so. Awesome. Yes. Well, we've been speaking with Delaney Strasser and Madeline Calloway, our interns for this summer. Any last thoughts you want to share with our listeners before we wrap up? I didn't tell them I was going to ask them that question. <laughs> well, so. let, here, let's make it simple. Yeah. What would you tell seniors this year as you're looking for scholarships? Because obviously, you know, Delaney, you said, it changed your life. What would you tell seniors that are out there going, ah, that's a lot of paperwork, that's a lot of stuff to do. It's actually, worth it, right? Yes, yep. um, our amazing scholarship coordinator, Shannon Berger, has actually made our scholarship application this year a lot more or less um, complex and hard for applicants. It's kind of like a one-stop shop and you go in and you fill out one application and you fill out all these different questions it asks you and it will funnel you towards all the scholarships that you yourself qualify for. So. Um, you don't have to go through and do all these different applications. You actually only do one originally, and then you can go into a few others and answer the rest of the like original questions that they would have asked you. So not only is it super rewarding, but it just got a whole lot easier, which <laughs> makes it really, really great. But I also just think at the end of the day, you have to think about um, like what you want for yourself in the future and how this could impact you and how much easier and less of a burden it can make your college experience. Madeline? Yeah, I agree with all of that. I would also say just to remember that there are people that want to help you and there are resources out there that can help you. And so I think you should fully take advantage of that and it really will benefit you. And it's something I know both of us are very grateful for. And if anybody wants to get involved in a thing that encourages you, sit on a scholarship committee because yeah. you'll, you'll see some pretty impressive things that happen like the young ladies that are with us today that you think about the things that they've done already and the great things that not to put any pressure on you but we know you guys <laughs> will do just these ladies have done an amazing job with us this summer and whether they're here or someplace else we'll continue to do so well thank you for your time thank you for joining us we appreciate it we've, we've done this the last few summers yeah, it's and fun it's it's fun to hear the feedback from somebody that doesn't necessarily live in this world every single day although by this point you've been with us for <laughs> about three months two months two and a half months yeah. Yeah. had a little fun done some boring things learned some <laughs> things hopefully hopefully enjoyed the time and learned a few things through the process so well if, Folks are listening, they have questions about anything we talked about. Um, reminder, Lily scholarship applications open August 8th. Women's Giving Circle Grant applications are available now. Start thinking about that video that you're going to put together. You can find information about both of those, nicf.org. Click on the Fulton County page and look either at the scholarship or grants or Women's Giving Circle pages for more information about those. Um, also, we can plug the matching grant we have going for the Black at our Sports Complex. If you are interested in that, reach out to that group or reach out to us. We can connect you with that. But um, we're excited about all the things that are happening here in Fulton County. If you have any questions, check us out online, nicf.org on the website. Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office, 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any questions or ideas you have for our community. Ladies, thank you for coming in. Enjoy the rest of your summer, and good luck uh, this year at school, and uh, hopefully we'll see you both back again next year. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Brian, thanks for your time this morning and uh, have a good month. You're listening to 92.1 WWE.